Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Duster Bust. Happy Sunday. Finally done with the dash. So, I'm sorry, I thought it was going to take two weeks. It ended up taking, you know, four weeks or weekends to, to get all the work done. So, sorry, content's been a little slow lately. If you're not into dashes, it's been a little boring probably. But we're done. So, we're going to close out everything and then we're moving on to other fun stuff. So, today what we're going to do is I'm going to show you guys the finished dash. I think it looks awesome. Really happy with the way that it came out. So we're going to talk about all of the different design elements, what went well, what didn't, uh, the results, etc. Before we do that though, just hit 500 subscribers. So wanted to say again, big thanks to everybody who has been following along. Really appreciate that. So we aren't going to do anything special for 500, but we will do a big giveaway when we hit a thousand. So again, appreciate the help so far. You know, please help me make it to a thousand. So if you haven't already subscribed, please consider subscribing. And if you have friends who are into old cars or, or thinking of getting into working on old cars, you know, consider sharing this with them as well. All right, thanks again. Let's get into it. So here is a quick look at how it came out. All right, so I overall I'm super happy with it. I think it came out awesome. There's obviously things that could be better and I'll talk through each of those. But given my, you know, still what I consider still a pretty beginner status, I think this looks great, you know, did everything myself, it was a ton of work, learned a lot along the way. So let's start talking through each design element and uh, and how it went. So let's first start with the, uh, the frame here, and I talked some of these uh, two weeks ago, so I'm going to kind of go through it quickly. The frame, so what we did was we stripped the frame all the way down to bare metal, um, got it all nice and cleaned up. We shaved the ashtray, so went through, basically welded that shut and uh, and just totally cleaned it up. And then there was a whole bunch of holes and stuff down here. So those all got filled, uh, a little bit of Bondo painted, cleaned up. And then on the top side, you know, again, just cleaned everything up, uh, fresh coat of paint, uh, replaced these vents and looks great so i love how clean everything flows without a, that ashtray it's just a very smooth look going across all right number two i talked this one uh, already again this is probably my least favorite part of everything is this dash pad that i made and i go into the details on that on, on a video two weeks ago so if you're looking to make one go check out that video so in general it does the job it looks okay but there's a couple imperfections you know around and then it's just a little loose in a few spots now this only cost me aside from having to buy a old beat up frame which was about 90 bucks actually recovering it only cost me about 10 bucks so whenever i get to a point where this is bothering me and and you know there's so much other stuff to do right now i don't have an engine in the car so this becomes not the priority anymore but one day when it you know when it starts bugging me and i have everything else done i can come and try again for 10 bucks or you know i can splurge and buy the 350 dollars one but uh but for 10 bucks and some labor it, it's good enough for now all right next the cluster so last week i talked about some of the issues that i was having with it um in general i'm very proud of the way that this thing turned out even though it has you know plenty of imperfections you know the welds i wish i could do a better job of cleaning up those those welds in there but i just don't really have the right tools for it and or you know the right uh the right knowledge yet but this thing is super complicated to me so to get all the bends right and to get it all in here um 
I think it came out really well. Now the one thing is the original cluster also had exposed fasteners on this section so I duplicated that and the fasteners over here were all hidden so I did that as well kind of keeping the original style of it. You know building this cluster was just a ton of work uh, it's stainless, so it's the same material as this. There's a little bit of difference in finish because I did throw on a shot of satin clear for two reasons. One is to, to help protect the welds so that that doesn't rust. And then also just to reduce the glare a little bit. If I have to look down, if I'm catching some sun from behind and I have to look down and check my gauges, I don't want to be blinded by it. Over here, I'm less concerned, but... I just thought it would be um, good for those two reasons. All right, so to get this look, I, I like this kind of swirly look on the stainless. I just hit that with a, with a high grit flap disc. I think I was using an 80 and just tried to get, you know, kind of a, kind of a, a scratched up um, circular pattern on it. I think it looks pretty sweet, so I dig it. All right, next, talking about these gauges. These are the Equus 8000 series. They're, they're, they're what they call the performance gauges. They're kind of a high visibility. So when you look down, um, there's a little bit of a yellowish tint to it. And then the hot orange uh, dial, just very visible when you look at it. So you can kind of pick up your reading really quickly. They came, these gauges came with everything that you need to hook them up also it even had a fuel sending unit in there so i think this was actually a really good deal for all of these gauges considering everything that you get they look great all right so one other thing that was bothering me a little bit at first is the tint is a little bit different on the tack versus the speedometer so you can see uh, and most of the gauges are, are this way. They're this yellow greenish uh, hue in the background is just a little bit lighter on this one. I don't know why it did bug me a little bit at first, but honestly, there's so many positives about these that to me, it outweighs that little bit of a, of a difference in tint. All right, so that's it for the cluster. Moving on to this whole section. So what we did was we took everything off and um, it basically covered up everything that I wasn't going to use. So uh, just a, a sheet of stainless in here. The one downside is it's really hard to cut a straight line with basic kind of hand tools. So there is a little bit of a wave that you can see here. Most people would never even notice, especially because it comes very close to the dash pad. So if you're sitting at, you know, regular ride height, you're not even gonna see that. So the stainless piece was just, you know, some work to, to measure it, get it all laid out in, in paper. I did tuck it underneath on this side. I was trying to figure out how I was gonna do it, if I was gonna try to copy this and just leave like a half inch gap or something and then i had the idea of running it all the way underneath and i think that makes for a really good transition out of the cluster onto kind of the rest of this dash uh, paneling all right moving on to the switches i love these simple metal toggle switches absolutely love them so these were like four dollars each at Lowe's and I use the area where up oh, going under where the heater so I didn't even cut out anything extra in in the back here all right so I put in seven gauges they fit in really well right there also I don't think I'm gonna need seven but I want to, to save some spares in case I didn't think about something that way it's already ready to go whenever I wire it up because chances are I forgot about something so I have some spares, and what I could do also, I was thinking would be pretty cool, is to wire in like maybe two of these to be a kill switch. So basically, you know, let's say that this one has to be up and this one has to be down in order for the ignition to work. You know, something cool like that. It's, you know, a kill switch that's hidden in plain sight. Could be cool, I don't know. That's a problem for future me to figure out whenever I'm doing the wiring. All right, so the last piece is this little vinyl accent 
across the bottom. And this, surprisingly, this is one of my favorite pieces, the fa favorite components of this whole build because it really ties it in together. You know, with, with it out, with it just stainless completely across, it just doesn't look quite right. But having this little strip here, I think it's a salute to the original design where they had that accent on there, but it was, you know, molded into the uh, into the piece. But I think this just looks cool. I think it ties it in. This angle came out really nice. This piece over here is the one downside, and it's it's actually loose, but it doesn't follow perfectly. I would it's a little more rounded inside, but when the fabric when I put the fabric on here, it just didn't follow quite right so maybe one day i'll take that off and play around with it but for now i think it looks pretty good doing the whole thing with basic tools you know i think it came out pretty well you know if i had you know a bender or you know a big uh cutter so i can make nice clean cuts or if i had a friend who was really good at cad and could help me lay things out and didn't choose to go skiing instead maybe we could have come out a little bit better but i think it looks pretty awesome i'm happy with it we're gonna call it a win so moving on to other stuff drop me a comment let me know what you think you know I've, I've had a few different videos on it so let me know you know from the design concept to now do you think we came out pretty good on it drop me a comment let me know your thoughts so hopefully this video gave you some ideas if you're doing your own dash remodel also i would suggest uh go check out the channel just mopar joe joe recently did some changes to his barracuda drag car and i think those came out really nice as well so in general joe super nice guy and uh, really knows his stuff so i would suggest go check that out as well all right so we're done with the dash the weather's getting nice what are we doing next we are going back to the engine so we stopped working on it because it's basically just cold and miserable here in the garage now that that's no longer an issue we're going to get this thing built up get it back in the car so we'll be working on that for the next few weeks it'll be a mix of you know some stuff on the actual work on the engine itself and then a few theory videos and um, stuff of that nature as i'm learning stuff there's some really cool stuff that i think would make for some cool videos to share so stay tuned for that that's it thanks for watching take care folks we'll see you next week